If you've ever wandered past the D&D section of your local game store, it can get pretty overwhelming if you're new to the hobby. Shelves and shelves of books, each one looks amazing. But which ones do you need? Do you even need them? That's the topic of today's D&D Academy, the books. In our last episode, we talked about the dice and how to read them. Today we're going to talk about the books of D&D, and I'll let you in on the best part right from the beginning. You don't need the books to get started. Yep, you actually get started for the low price, free. Wizards of the Coast, the publisher of Dungeons & Dragons, has the basic rules for D&D on their website for free download. I'll include a link to them below in the doobly-doo. The basic rules explain how to play and run D&D for the first five levels of play. Plenty of time to try out the hobby and see if it's to your taste. In future videos, we'll use the basic rules to craft a simple adventure for you and your friends to play so you can see just how easy it is to get started. The character sheets, which are the record sheets for the players, are also available for download, and I'll link to them as well. There's also some pre-made characters there, which can get your group up and playing even faster. Again, all for the fantastic price of totally free. Now before we dive into the real meat of this video, I also want to mention the box sets. The box sets are also a great place to begin with D&D. The box sets not only contain the basic rules of the game, they come with a set of dice, pre-made character sheets, and an adventure to run. The D&D starter set, which for my money is the best item to get when jumping into D&D for the first time, comes with the adventure The Lost Mine of Fandelver, which we're playing through right now on this channel, and we'd love for you to join us. So what about all these books I'm surrounded by? Good question. Now there's three books that are referred to as the core rule books. The Player's Handbook, the Monster Manual, and the Dungeon Master's Guide. The Player's Handbook is everything a player or a Dungeon Master needs to know about playing D&D, and it's divided into three sections. The first section covers all the player's options for creating characters and leveling them up. The second section covers the basic rules of play, and the last section covers magic, which is some of the most advanced things characters can get up to in the game. If you've tried running or playing D&D and decided that you like it, this should be the first book that you pick up. The next two of the core rulebooks are intended for dungeon masters, as opposed to the players, as they contain information about crafting and running adventures. The Monster Manual is a compendium of creatures for dungeon masters to populate their adventures with. The basic rules contain enough creatures to get going in D&D, but the Monster Manual is where you'll find the iconic monsters that really make the game what it is. Ancient dragons, scheming devils, Hordes of goblins and legions of undead can all be found in the Monster Manual. And the last of the core rulebooks is the Dungeon Master's Guide. The Dungeon Master's Guide is a volume of information for Dungeon Masters on how to craft adventures, characters, and even whole worlds for players, as well as advanced versions of the rules and additional rules you can add into your game so you can alter the style of your game to suit your taste. There's even a section on how to alter or even craft your own rules and creatures so that you can fully customize your game of D&D into any theme and genre. If you're just starting out, my personal advice is to start out with just the starter set box. If you want more options for your game, the next step is to get a player's handbook. Once you're comfortable with that, then go ahead and get yourself a monster manual and the Dungeon Master's Guide. There's enough information in those books to happily run D&D for years. So what about all those other books? Well, let's take a tour of them, shall we? The rest of the books for D&D are broken down into three categories. Rule supplements, campaign source books, and adventures. When you pick up a D&D book, you'll see a short blurb on the bottom of the cover written in white font. While this is mostly a pitch for what the book contains, it will say in that sentence if it is a supplement, a source book, or an adventure. Rule supplements are books containing additional options for playing and running D&D. Inside you'll find additional character options, expanded ideas for rules, new spells and items, as well as additional systems for styles of gameplay. Rule supplements are designed for both players and DMs, but the options are typically intended for slightly more experienced players and DMs. But certainly don't let that ever stop you from jumping into the deep end of the pool. Just be sure that you have your core rulebooks as well, as the supplements expand on the core rulebooks, but they don't replace them. Campaign source books are books about different settings for your D&D games. Source books detail whole worlds for DMs to tell stories for their players in. And so source books are mainly intended for dungeon masters. However, 
they also do contain some additional options for players to use. This is usually due to these options being part of the flavor of that setting, and can help players create characters that are more grounded to that particular world. Now the last type of books for D&D are the adventures. These books contain exciting and fantastical adventures for DMs to run for their players, and as such, they are for the Dungeon Master's eyes only. Oftentimes, when people are talking about their D&D games, they'll use the name of the adventure they're playing through, such as Curse of Strahd or Tomb of Annihilation. Some adventure books contain one long adventure to play through, while others contain a series of smaller adventures. Storm King's Thunder is one adventure spanning the entirety of the book, while Ghosts of Saltmarsh is a series of small adventures that can be played through independently or as a series. Now that covers the books for D&D and which ones you might want to acquire. Down in the doobly-doo below, we have a link to our Amazon affiliate store where you can purchase any or all of the books that we've talked about at no extra charge to you, and we get a little bit of the proceeds to help keep the candles lit around here. I want to thank you all for joining me today, and if you like this series, please consider subscribing to our channel. We're posting new videos every week with a lot more to come. We're currently playing through the adventure The Lost Mine of Fandelver, and we also have a weekly roundtable discussion about playing and running D&D on our show, Behind the Screen. Go ahead and hit the bell icon below to receive notifications when they come out so that you don't miss anything. That's it for today's D&D Academy. Next week, we're going to start talking about characters in D&D. See you then.